Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, a couple of reminders uh, for today. Um, this Thursday, I head out of town for vacay. If you need anything, call the office or Patty Ralph Babla, and they will direct you to the appropriate resource. Because uh, I will not be in town. So, that's it. Uh, what was that? You look so happy. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, when you see your best friend from college, you haven't seen each other in years, you know. It's always exciting. And, uh, uh, I'm kind of thought, what was it? Um, Pride planning meeting at 1 o'clock today at Barbecue for Life. So, planning for Boise Pride and what we do there. Any other announcements for the good of the people? Oh yes, general convention. Well, actually, it's not so much general convention as I'm oh. on the roster as the vestry oh. representative. Oh, I thought you were going to bring us news about the general convention. Oh, I, I will, but actually, there's okay. so much to talk about. Uh, okay. Uh, it would probably be better to talk about the parish hall. Perfect. So we'll we'll save all of general all convention. But I am the vestry representative this Sunday, so if you have questions about what the heck is going on around here, hopefully I will have an answer for you. Or, if he doesn't know, he will make up a really convincing story. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I will lie if necessary. No, no, I no, no, no lies. But anyway, that's it. Okay. Uh, I was just. Marie. I want to let you know that the entire NPR committee is fully complying all the information that you gave us about uh, our new activity. And you will be hearing from one of us. Uh, each one is being assigned a certain activity. We're going to be part of the park game with the fall activity, my cars, the game, we probably won't start those until fall. But I mean, that kind of thing, hopefully Yes. So, it, thank you everyone who filled out the surveys about various activities that we can do as a parish, build small groups and things like this. So, we selected some of the more highly rated ones to get us started. Um, Bocce was at the top of the list, I know. Um, of course, because we've had such a champion of Bocce. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so we'll be hearing from various members of Compassionate Care as we just get the ball rolling on those. Ah. <laughs> ball rolling, watching Italian model, perfect for when you have no athletic ability. <laughs> so, so there's that. Thank you. That was actually the other thing that I was thinking I needed to talk about. Uh, and then I uh, wanted to do a little bit of uh, music work with you all. So, John, okay. Um, so the, the sequence here, we're going to use a little bit of Teze, um, just because Teze music is beautiful, it's simple, it's repetitive in a good way, to kind of be a little bit more meditative, and uh, also because you sing it enough times that basically everyone here should be able to get to feeling like they can sing along. So we're just going to do the simple uh, refrain part now. I wonder what the thing Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I do. I put people on the spot. What is the number for it? 829. 829. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. So, 829. So, feel free to hear this. Couple of times through, and 
it sort of slowly builds. And as we get used to it, Shauna will start pulling back, so that way it'll emphasize more of our voices. So we'll sing through, let's do four times. Let's do four times. Um, so that way we can get used to it when we get to the, the hymn before the gospel. Um, so to pronounce this, because it is Latin, and it does give you the translation. So laudate dominum, laudate dominum, omnes gentes alleluia. Like that. And if you butcher the Latin, that's fine. Because this is ecclesiastical Latin versus classical Latin, which there is a difference. I'm a nerd. Yes. <laughs> so, so it's just a wonderful little piece of music. So let that soak into you today. Is there anything else that I've missed? Oh, you want to you want to practice it? Oh, okay, I think I'll do it. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so it's, it's So let us enter into this time of worship with some sacred silence.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all hearts are known, and from you the secrets are hidden. Let us thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and I will Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your fears into mourning. Excuse me, I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentations. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun. 
And the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Let's read together Psalm 52. <clears throat> you tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot murder. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, a worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lie more than speaking truth. You love all words that hurt. O you deceitful tongue, O that God would demolish you utterly, toggle you and snatch you from your throne, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see thee in trouble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like the green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done, and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of God. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, have become a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. stood in for all the people that were doing stuff in the world, those lay people in the pews, and then Mary represented the priests, the monks, the nuns, who were like the real Christians, and everyone else was just kind of, well, you do your stuff, but the real Christians are going to do theirs. Um, so that's a really bad read of the gospel passage from today. And uh, look at the word that's used, better. Better means a comparison between two goods. So contemplative time, prayer time, is the better part, meaning it gives life and meaning and all these things. But service is also good. Doing things out in the world, also good. And so this false dichotomy between active and contemplative is not good. So do both. <laughs> okay. How many of you this past week have been looking at pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope? Oh, yeah. Just a handful of pictures and just the beauty of these things. Astounding. Now, I remember the first pictures I saw from the Hubble Space Telescope back in the day, when suddenly we're seeing these colorful galaxies and nebulae out there. Beautiful, haunting, mesmerizing, and Frankly, sometimes a little scary to think about just how huge the universe is and this tiny, tiny, tiny speck of dirt we call Earth. And now the, the new James Webb telescope can give us an even more detailed glimpse of stuff that's even farther out there. Distances and details we couldn't have imagined. The universe is a thing of beauty. And we Christians look at all this, and we marvel. We see the work of a loving God. Whether or not there is life elsewhere in the universe, we see all this cosmic beauty that has taken billions of years to develop, and billions of years for that light to reach us. Unfathomably massive is this universe that God has created and behind the laws of nature, and then the strangeness that is quantum mechanics. We see the loving, creative acts of God. We do not see chaos. We see the cosmos. Cosmos, not chaos. We look out at the stars, and we see the creation of a loving God. We see no conflict between science and religion. Science is an endless curiosity that wants to dig deeper and deeper to understand things, to leave no stone unturned and no distant galaxy unobserved. And religion is curious too, curious about life, about 
about meaning, about beauty, about love. Life is simply better when we're curious. We look at the world and our hearts are lifted up in wonder. And in the midst of our marvelous wonder, our hearts are moved. Sometimes our hearts are moved in wordless praise. Praise for the beauty of creation, praise for the wonders of God. And then sometimes we are moved to sing. Music is a wonder of creation, is it not? Think about it. How sound waves hit our bodies, hit our eardrums, and the vibrations get transmitted to our brains to experience a sound. And then not just sound, but as music, the rhythm, the high notes, the low notes, the types of instruments, the words made by the human voice. Frankly, music is one of the most fitting responses to such a marvelous creator. God can create a universe where distant galaxies and nebulae and even black holes create masterpieces. And in our own little dusty corner of the universe, we can create music back. No wonder that our prayer book emphasizes that the angels sing to God and we join in their song, the Eucharist. Holy, holy, holy. Music is our response. Hymns are not a nice, ancillary accompaniment to worship. Even if we're not singing the Gloria at the start of the service, which is what we do at 8 o'clock, or if we're not singing out the holy, holy, holy with the angels at the altar, we're at least making a, a spoken word sort of hymn, like a poet. And scripture's filled with hymns. You might know that there's an entire book of them, the Psalms, and then there's the more obvious canticles, and then there are hymns buried in our morning readings. The first stanza of today's reading from the letter to the Colossians is, in fact, an early hymn. We know that, because of how it's structured in the Greek. It has the poetic rhythm, it has the structure, it has repetition. It doesn't rhyme, but not all poetry rhymes. How it sounded when it was sung is lost in time, since they didn't have musical notations to write it down, and they couldn't record it. It was clearly a powerful, important hymn to this community, because the letter to the Colossians makes use of it to get into theology. And the writer of this letter, it's a traditionally attributed to St. Paul, it says it's from Paul, but it was probably a later Christian writing in his name, it happened a lot, makes use of this hymn to help a community that was in trouble. The church in Colossae was in trouble. This community had been lost in all sorts of spiritual and theological weirdness. Endless talk about angels and spirits, endless philosophical speculation, and endless rules about how to keep those spirits happy. We might call it kind of the ancient equivalent of New Age religion mixed with those philosophical conversations you may have had late at night when you speculate on the nature of the world, especially when you were in college, possibly under the influence of substances. <laughs> so the writer of this letter uses this hymn that this community knew to bring them back to their senses. Don't get lost thinking about angels and spirits and philosophy and all these things. Nice, but don't get wrapped up in them. Remember, you sing this hymn that Christ is the center, the one through whom all things were made. And remember that you're a part of Christ's body. Don't get lost in the shallow stuff that passes for mysticism. Rejoice and marvel in Christ. The Colossians hymn brought the community back to Christ as its center. That's the power of a good hymn. A good hymn has both beauty and power. It gives us all words to praise God, to give voice to our experiences, 
It brings us together to proclaim a common faith. The rhythm, the words, the melody, the harmony go from mere sounds to music. And even if you think you can't sing, if that Laudate Domino was just still too much, you're like, I can't sing, I bring you this important fact. William Shatner, you know who William Shatner is, yes? He put out a spoken word album, and it's a masterpiece. Spoken word, the man does not sing. You can do that. I believe in you. I believe in you. So don't let anyone tell you that you can't make music. So sit with the words of any of our hymns. What is it saying? What is it saying about God? What is it saying about our lives, about our world? What might you take with you? Our hymnals have deep poetry and holy theology to guide us in our lives. The music we make shows off that marvelous creativity of God who created us and whose creativity flows in us and through us. Even if you think you can't sing, which I've told you you can, or if you don't think that you can make music, you can drum on a cue. That creativity of God flows through you Flows through you, make praise to God. Join with the cosmos to sing out praise to God our Creator. The cosmos can do it, so can you. Amen. Amen. from our faith in the word of the night church and the world. That the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That Michael, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, Jose, the bishop of Idaho, the leaders of our diocese, and the church throughout the world may have the wisdom and grace to carry out the ministries given to them. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That this parish of all saints, its clergy, wardens, vestry, and leaders, may have the assistance of the Holy Spirit in all that they do for our common life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations and leaders of the world may seek after the ways that make for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That war and violence may cease in all the world, and that people may have safety, shelter, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the whole creation may be strengthened, safeguarded, and healed, that it may reflect the glory of its Creator. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the peoples and ministries of our diocese, especially St. Andrew's McCall, may have what they need to fulfill our common mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those people on our hearts, especially Donna, Cheryl, Bill and Barbara, Mark and Kim, Kathy, Catherine, Mike and Chuck, Brent, Susan, Linda, the Sites family, Karen and Daryl, Pam, the Harris family, Gerald, Marilyn, along with those we name silently or aloud. May have the healing presence of Christ in their lives, now and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our building and grounds volunteers, our lawnmowers, kitchen cleaners, flower bed takers, and all others who care for our common home may have the strength and cheerfulness they need for their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. In the name of the Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to be your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 That is with you. Peace. Are there any uh, celebrations or blessings that people would like to share? started to deteriorate and uh, in May I believe she fell and was in the hospital for a period of time and then in a nursing home and after just maybe a couple of weeks there she went in she was in assisted living and after being in assisted living for a couple of weeks she went into the nursing home and then later hospice was there and she passed in early July. And her service has been in Helen. Um, she was a pioneer stock, uh, turned 96 in March and led a wonderful life. Um, her grandparents had come on the wagon trains uh, to Oregon in the 1860s. Uh, she was a I don't know what generation of Episcopalian. Ron is definitely a cradle Episcopalian. <laughs> um, there were lots of trips by lots of family members to Panama in the past couple of months. And I've been definitely out of contact with anyone. Um, back, um, I'm back. And we so appreciate all the, all the prayers and good thoughts our All Saints family. My little brother, who acts like my big brother, <laughs> will be 68 on the 19th of July. And I'm so blessed to have him as my brother. And I, I, uh, I also thank God that I stopped my wandering and found this church. And as uh, was mentioned at the beginning, I went to convention. I am thankful for that opportunity. I'm thankful to be part of a church that is as incredibly diverse as uh, we, we represented in uh, Baltimore, Thankful for the wonderful sermons we heard every morning during uh, worship. Uh, it, it was just an absolutely incredible experience. And uh, I'm thankful for the work of the church, the things that we, the hundreds of resolutions that we dealt with uh, um, are likely to dramatically change the church going forward. I love that a lot of people are about it. We're there.
Nobody can sing that one. <laughs> if you want to join me, if you want to grab out the prayer book and turn to page 831. And let's pray together uh, prayer 54 for those we love. That we've heard a lot of joys and sadness and a lot of things shared. And this is a prayer that covers pretty much everything. Together, Almighty God, we, we entrust all who are dear to us. Do not ever forget the care of your own. For this life and my life to come, knowing that you are forgiven for the sin of the sinner, and the sin of the desire of your glory, we reach you, Jesus Christ, our Lord. to the new little offertory sentence. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. O Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power. Because you have created all 